it's been said that rock and roll is a vicious game. Sex, drugs, lies, betrayal, and many times even death are all too common in this scene. On this week's Ludini Rock and Roll Circus podcast, we're going to discuss 10 films that showcase the dark side of rock and metal. It's going to be brutal, guys. You've been warned. You're listening to the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus, changing rock history one podcast at a time. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. My name is Lou Lombardi, a.k.a. Ludini. Sitting next to me in the co-pilot's chair this evening is... Do you need me to say my name? <laughs> Sitting in the co-pilot's chair with me this evening is... Lily V6, Rock Lily Rage Radio. V- Rock Rage Radio. So we are on Rock Rage Radio. Please go to rockrageradio.com. Com. Download the app. You can hear great guitar-driven rock 24 24- Seven all the time, totally freaking free. Just download that damn app. You can walk. Look, guys, you're walking around with this thing in your pocket, one of these uh, mobile devices in your pocket. You might as well be listening to good music while you're doing it. That's, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Uh, speaking of great music, if you want to, um, if you are a fan of the great guitar driven rock of the 70s, 80s, 90s, and even today, the place you want to hang out, the place where the cool people are all chilling and talking about music and getting to know each other, um, plus getting a lot of great uh, exclusive music and cool stuff there, you want to go to lulambartyrocks.com. That's our hub. That's our community. Check it out. Um, all kind of cool freebies there. A little uh, Facebook Messenger bot pops up and takes you through the whole thing and shows you all the goodies you can get. You can go to lulambartyrocks.com. Uh, shout out to our longtime sponsor at Wolf's Custom. It's uh, Chris Thunderwolf Dodson. Big fan of the show. We love Chris Thunderwolf Dodson and his uh, business, Wolf's Customs. Here's, what, here, here's what's going to happen, guys. Okay, You're going to get your guitar, your bass, your ukulele, whatever you got, your drums, and you're going to get them out and you're going to look at them and you're going to go like, these things are cool, but they need a really awesome custom finish from Wolf's Customs so that when I get up on stage to rock out or if I get on Zoom to do a Zoom or Facebook Live or whatever I'm going to do, I need an instrument that's going to really stand out. It's going to grab people's attention. So this is where Wolf's Customs comes in. You contact Wolf uh, Chris Thunderwolf Dotson at Wolf's Customs, uh, Wolf's Customs dot online. And he will take you through the process of getting a custom finish on your instrument. He does a great job. Check him out, wolfscustoms.online. So, hey, help us out. One of the ways you can, you want to support great guitar driven rock, support our sponsor. A lot of people that hang out with us are musicians. Um, so, this is something for you guys. Oh, anyways, uh, it's been a, it's been a, a, again, another sort of like busy, but, well, how busy can you be when you can't really go too many places, right, Lily? <laughs> I mean, all I've been doing is hiking. Hiking. <laughs> and Lily don't hike. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I've been doing a lot of hiking and a lot of running as well. Um, writing some new songs. I'm pretty excited. I'm getting re- ready to release a couple more uh, real soon. I have one in the can, one almost done. Are we whistling? I think we're whistling disc Dixie there, but uh, yeah. So uh, Mike Ofka has produced one for me that's ready to come out. I need some artwork. I've been talking to somebody about that, so maybe you can help me with that later. Mm. And um, I've got another one that Chris Ruane from Fist Fight in the Parking Lot is producing for me, and that's about that's about done too. <clears throat> so some good stuff. My band is writing. We're writing together, so we're gonna have some cool music coming out for you guys as well. Um, we have a great show. I'm gonna get into it here in a minute. <clears throat> we always start out the show with. Um, a, a you know a band, and this week I believe I don't I've never played any of these bands before. Never, I've not played one. The mm. one band that we're going to uh, uh, the second band, Young Other, I discovered through uh, Anthony Leone mm. from uh, Silk uh, Nine. From Silk Nine, yeah. he posted them on on Facebook, 
and I listened to them and I really liked them. We're not playing their brand new song is a Nirvana cover. We're going to play an original song of theirs, uh, but we're going to open the, the, these other bands I discovered from Twitter. Twitter is an awesome resource. You've just got to you've just got to clean up your Twitter feed and get rid of all the po- politics and stuff like that. Block all that and just follow music stuff, and you will discover so much really cool music um, and bands you can reach out to. Other podcasters. I was making. I'm making. I've been. I made a bunch of connections this week, so I'm really excited about it. But this is a band called Black Actress. High, they say that their big influence is one of your favorite bands, Motley Crue. Oh, wonderful. So, this so is a we'll band see. called Bad, Bad Actors. High Speed Heartbreak on the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. <laughs> High Speed Heartbreak, everybody. That is Bad Actress. And I do believe those boys have one of those things uh, called a website or some sort of thing. Where, where can we find? Oh, uh, their Facebook uh, a web, a web address is uh, facebook.com backslash Bad Actress Band. Check them out. I, I guess I had to go with Bad Actress Band, so not to be confused with all the bad actresses out there. I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. So, uh, so. Legit, legit, right, Lily? <laughs> legit, legit. Um, so, um, we have a great show for you guys today. We're talking about these disturbing rock doc most of them are metal actually um but there is a uh a couple some a few birthday shout outs we need to do real quick and of course it is my mr my generation pete townsend uh birthday today born 1945 shout out to dusty hill one third of zz top <laughs> one of them bad boys from texas right <laughs> uh, Phil Rudd from ACDC, drummer from ACDC, and Joey Ramone. Ah, uh, Joey. Ah, uh, jo- Joey from the rock band The Ramones. <laughs> so, uh, happy birthday to all you uh, you guys out there. Hope you're having a great time. Hope you're living it up. Hope you're partying in your private bar or wherever you are. Um, okay, and uh, uh, Bill Damiano, Kevin O'Connor are watching. So, uh, they appreciate you guys. Leave us some comments. We do appreciate that. Okay, so. Let's get into it, Lily. Um, is there an order, or are you just jumping in? I'm, I don't have them in an order. We, we don't really I have just, an order. I think <laughs> can't that we really should save, rank these. I think we should save this for like later, or maybe even last. You want me to do that last? Okay. Yeah, so let's <laughs> let's start with Lamb of God. Okay, that's what I was going to start with. Crazy. So Lamb of God, um, as the palace is burned. Um, this was actually supposed to be sort of a film that was following them on their tours, and it kind of like did a flip flop, and um, there was a dramatic turn of events halfway through the shooting. Uh, the lead singer, Randy Blythe. No, uh, there wasn't a shooting in the movie, though. Sorry. <laughs> no, not a shooting. <laughs> there was um, the lead singer, Randy Blythe, uh, got arrested in Prague in 2012 for manslaughter uh, of Daniel Nosek, a fan who was allegedly pushed off the stage by Blythe and killed, obviously. Um, but after that happened, they uh, the whole uh, documentary turned into uh, a courtroom drama. Basically, it followed the entire case and watched it unfold. Um, it was super high profile, and um, of course, he was found innocent. But that was kind of a cool thing because of how like, it was supposed to be one thing, and it went whoosh, completely. What I found really fascinating uh, about the case and it, about about the, the documentary is they um, they really did the right thing. It, I mean, Randy could have hit out. He didn't have to go back, right, to the Czech Republic. He didn't have to, but he did. He he, he did. He, did and, his and said, he says, you know, he felt that he was innocent. He wanted to prove his innocence, and the court did sort of find. And I can't remember the uh, exact words. They sort of they said that he was innocent, but they also felt he was more morally responsible mm-hmm. or something like that um, f- for the for the incident, which is. I, I, I don't know. You know, somebody had to, you know, get something thrown at them for it. But he did. What was he was in jail like in the beginning when they arrest, arrested him initially? Mm-hmm. But he didn't really do any actual time for the the uh, the, the situation because he was they so sort of, they sort of felt that the security and the promoter were uh, more responsible. A little for, at fault there. Yeah, for for what happened. Um, interesting enough, I saw, I saw an interview with him. Where, uh, you know, more recent interview where he said that 
they don't really he won't he doesn't want to go back and play Prague. He says he loves Prague, but he doesn't want to go back and play it because he just feels like it would be disrespectful to the family. He doesn't want to like dredge. He doesn't up. want to bring up some old yeah, feelings. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like make people feel bad and stuff that. like that. He says unless they invited them to do some kind of benefit or something for the family. He says, but he says he just didn't. He, you know, he just doesn't feel that uh, that's cool. So the thing that I really, really kind of like because you this. The, unlike the rest, the, 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 the unlike the rest of the <laughs> movie, a documentary is on this list. Okay, this is an incident. This is completely different because this is an incident where these these rockers d- kind of stood up and acted like responsible adults. They said, <laughs> "Which is wait a minute, happen. there's a screw up here. We want to make sure things are taken care of the right way. We're going to go back, even though we could end up in trouble. We are going to go back." And do the right do thing. the right thing, and like take responsibility in everywhere, and in, 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 into the best of our ability, and obey the law and everything. Um, and it's that that sh- I some of the reviews I read about this, some of the commentary I've read about this documentary was that's really what shocked people. Mm-hmm. Because people were sort of expecting, well, these are these are sleazy rock and rollers. They're just going to do what they they're going to hide out. They're going to try to get away with it. Uh, <clears throat> Vince Neil, um, <clears throat> not you know, and, and or try to pay it off or do something. And he, it's all on video. Now it is a documentary. It is edited, etc. And it is an attempt. To the the doc, the guy that made the documentary does want to show the band in the best light possible. It's it's a friendly documentary. It's not hostile or anything like that. So, but still, unlike the rest of the. <laughs> documentaries on this list uh this is completely different because of that so uh interesting documentary i watched some highlights from it and read about it uh, this is not a, a list of one that i have actually seen so all right so lamb of god as the palace burns what do you got next um just before uh we start you can find all of these documentaries trailers online if you want to watch that before you go and maybe look these up if you haven't seen them so it's kind of gives you an insight as to what's also going some on of them. them some of the ones some of them are absolutely free on youtube mm-hmm. you have to you have to put up with spanish subtitles on some of them <laughs> but they're there um, so I'm just going to go ahead and do the one that everybody's probably seen, The Decline of the Western Civilization Part Two: The Metal Years, which was uh, from 1988. And um, it chronicles the late 80s L.A. heavy metal scene with uh, the emphasis placed on the glam metal uh, subgenre. Um, they do feature the more established artists like Alice Cooper, Ozzy, uh, Aerosmith, Dave Mustaine, Paul Stanley, etc. But they also give some credit to many unsigned L.A. club bands like London, which I don't know. I'm sure you're familiar with London, but it featured like Nikki Six, Blackie Lawless, Izzy Stradlin, Steven Adler, Slash. Those kind of guys were all in that band at one time. Um, Odin and Seducer, the other two bands they touch on. Um, a lot of the scenes in this documentary are showing rock stars in their excess. So like all the extra footage is like so examples would be like Chris Holmes from Wasp was interviewed. That's that is the most disturbing one. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's, it's sad. It's very it's kind of tragic. Yeah, he was uh, in a swimming pool um, and he's pouring vodka all over himself saying what a piece of crap he is. And he's a full blown alcoholic. Is and that he, his mother? Yeah, it was his poor mother <laughs> watching this happen in the documentary with him. And she I think she wasn't even well at the time. That this happened, but that was one of the things they show. Um, Randy O from Odin was in a hot tub surrounded by half naked uh, ladies, stating that his, only half, only half, it said half, uh, <laughs> that his band will become more famous than Led Zeppelin and The Doors, and he thought that superstardom would cause him to think about suicide. So that's all on there. And um, the favorite, which I think is faked from what I read, um, Ozzy in the kitchen With cooking breakfast. Juice. Talking about his wild lifestyle and you know the whole yeah. Thing. There's but, a yeah. Uh, it, during that uh, interview with Ozzy, he's cooking breakfast and they they it, which they is appear, funny enough to see. <laughs> they appear to zoom in on his hands as he's pouring orange juice, and you see the orange juice. He's, he pours the orange juice all over the table mm-hmm. or the counter. It's, and and it, it, she uh, uh, Penelope Spiris said that they. They staged that. Yeah. They were like, they filmed the whole thing and then they said, hey, why don't you dump the orange juice on the table? It'll be funny. <laughs> so, I mean. Whatever. Whatever. Um, <laughs> so so some people have made a bigger deal out of that. Here's, uh, here's, this is where Lily and I are going to slightly disagree. Okay. Um, Pene- First of all, I feel I'm a big fan of the original, The Decline of Western Civilization. Mm-hmm. That, in my opinion, is way more disturbing than the metal years. 
Did you say ever seen it? I have not seen you it. Have I've only it. seen the metal. Years. There's a there's a there's a scene where a guy is dead, dies at a show. Okay, and they're just get, getting pictures taken with his body. Oh, okay, it's yeah, jacked, that would probably win. It is jacked up, um, and I and and Penelope is a um, self professed lifestyle punk rocker. She's almost seventy now. Oh yeah, the first uh, part was about the punk rock. Yeah, right? yeah and. Right. I, the decline of Western civilization is chilling. It's so intense. The metal years is a different atmosphere. And I kind of felt like, even though, even though I didn't know much about her when I first saw it, I kind of felt that she was treating these metal acts kind of cartoonishly. Like it's, they're kind of portrayed as kind of silly. Whereas the punk thing is portrayed in a much more serious way, so so you can tell who she likes better. It's very obvious it's, it's, that she it's is one a punker sided. and okay. not a, not not a metalhead. Biased. I think that she thought that these <laughs> artists were kind of cute with their crazy hair um, and their clothes and, and stuff like that. So um, <laughs> it's I, I I I have to say in terms of which which one is more disturbing, it, it there is a three by the way, which I have not seen. Um, I think that the first one is by far way more disturbing. Just and even if you aren't a big punk rocker, you should. I still you, like if punk. You are, I if you like rock metal. at all, you absolutely should watch it because it is just like holy. Cra- there's stuff you go like. We have an update from someone saying that was uh, Gigi Allen. They were taking pics within his coffin in the first one. So. So. Yeah, so so there yeah. so there is there's there's some jacked up stuff yeah. in that first one. Anyway, <laughs> so we could so, have included that too. Yeah, so so the, so we might so we might want like uh, I'll watch the kind of Western now. Civilization Part One and Part Two, <clears throat> but yeah, it's um it, the the um Chris Holmes thing is is I is tragic. It's sad. It's to just watch. really sad because he's just like he's just kind of given up on life and uh, he's just drinking and and she he won't answer the he, she's trying to get him to answer questions and he's just drinking and not kind of like you know he's not there he's kind of not there um, there are other people in it though you know Alice Cooper is in it mm-hmm. and he's very he, he's just like he is now yeah he's totally together totally <laughs> cogent you know totally professional you know it, it, it's it's interesting if you're a metal fan if you if you I can't believe any people who aren't a fan of like the glam metal uh of that area have never seen it if you haven't go it's it's a, it, it's fun you want you definitely do want it now it. do it now do it now soon no listen to the do podcast it show. First, then go do it <laughs> okay so what's next on the list um next on my list is metallica some kind of monster from 2003 um it's the chronicle of the recording of the group's most despised album saint anger um they end up bringing a life coach in to talk to them <laughs> through their differences, which um, it's interesting to see it. I did watch a couple of clips from it. Um, Hetfield is over here claiming his addiction recovery only enables him to work at certain times and it's like certain hours and he's a crybaby. Well, he leaves halfway through, the part, yeah. part of the way through the recording to go to therapy yeah. or to go to a uh, rehab rather. Yeah. And he's gone to, he's been in, he was in rehab again recently, you know. Yes. Speaking of some kind of monster. Uh, Lars is over here talking about selling his multi-billion dollar modern art collection. Dave Mustaine is in it in the mix talking about how he was brutally fired. Um, The film makes the entire band look petty, which they are, and jerks, which they are. Uh, But since that movie, people seem to have warmed up to them once again and um, love Metallica once again. Well, I mean, you know. It sort of made them. I think that humbled them a little bit after uh, that. Yeah, that it <laughs> makes them makes <laughs> it makes them a little bit more like real people, but arrogant real people, like kind yeah. of people you don't want to spend any time with. Um, <laughs> Kurt, uh, Kurt, uh, Kurt Hammett is upset because they 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 don't want to do any guitar solos. <laughs> Um, you don't have Kurt Hammond in your band and not have guitar solos. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, stop. Uh, the thing with Dave Mustaine is very bizarre. It's Dave Mustaine and. Uh, uh, Lars on a couch and Dave is talking about how how he's like still resentful of Metallica and he always feels like he's second to them and everything and I just wanted to reach through the screen and say dude sir excuse me Megadeth hello I believe and I'm not sure and I didn't get a chance to look it up I believe Megadeth is if has not won a Grammy they've been Grammy nominated in the heavy metal I believe category. that's correct yes. um so they have nothing to be ashamed of they're, you know it is he's just holding a grudge who, who, what it's the big four of big trash, four yeah. you know I mean there's no it's like, like you're still up there geez you know I mean like and it's his own band if he would have stayed in in if he would have stayed in Metallica that wouldn't have been his own band so 
So, he's just one of those people. And yeah, I mean, he's a <laughs> he's a singer and a songwriter. And he's de- and he's got a different style than than what those guys do. He's got a, you know a totally different thing going on. <clears throat> Uh, and he's also remained uh, been more consistent with the metal, uh, I believe, than than Metallica has. Although they have they have d- d- put their the 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 dipped their toe into hard rock, um, you know, uh, on different occasions as well. They seem not to be afraid to try different yeah, things, that, even yeah. though it doesn't get them anywhere sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Th- and also there is uh, so Chronicles the 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 attempt to record this record. It takes a very long time, um, and. Boy, I mean, I, I James Hetfield is, uh, I mean, he's, I've always loved his uh, rhythm guitar playing and his singing and his lyrics and everything. But I really, after watching, I haven't even seen the whole thing. There's a, <laughs> there's a YouTuber that said, made a five minute video. And he's like, this is the only stuff that's important in the movie. <laughs> and it's fun, really funny just for that. But you just come away with this feeling of like, ick, like you guys are kind of <laughs> like, whiners petty and, <laughs> you know just it's just poor yucky. little rich boys now now this movie what was it what it, it's it's in the, from the early 2000s 2003 so we're almost 20 years later I'm sure the, the the guys have matured a little bit and and everything but um yeah some kind of monster metal i wrote in my notes metallica goes to a therapist <laughs> That's basically it. That's basically. <laughs> That's the gist of and it. And poor Bob Rock is just like, there's a scene where they're arguing. He's like, you know, tomorrow uh, we actually have to re- get do some real work, you know. <laughs> and they just, they're just like. Tsh. So um, let's do one more and then we'll play another song. I got Heavy Metal in Baghdad from 2007. And this was uh, very interesting. Um, it goes sort of behind enemy lines to get the story of uh, a Krasikata, a metal power trio trying to do their thing in Iraq at the same time when we were trying to oust or ousted Hussein. Um, It's shot in between bombings and under threat of death at all turns. Um, It shows the power of metal, how it inspires hope even during the time of war and um, just just how people are super dedicated to metal and uh, their music. Um, They completely risk their lives to get the footage. Um, They were interrogated as they came into the country. Uh, They were told that they would be shot at. So don't be surprised, even though they, and they let them in and do this. Um, this was with the help of Vice magazine and the article about the band. And they were able to actually sell out a show during this whole crazy thing, which I thought was kind of uh, interesting. And it actually took three years to shoot it, which also. Um, the band if, were um, big Metallica fans as well. And I they, could tell. They did eventually um, – uh, immigrate to the United States and they apparently did get to meet Metallica. Metallica had known who they were and there was a big sort of like, Oh my God, you know, Metallica. <laughs> um, starstruck. Very starstruck. <laughs> the documentary is touching um, and inspiring because these guys love music and in the, you know, and it makes you go, here's what it does guys uh, to all my musician friends out there who are going like, I can't, there's no, nobody wants to hear my music and I can't get anything going and nobody, and nobody you ain't doing right. nothing. You know what? <laughs> if, if these guys can do something in the middle of a freaking war, they managed to find a way to release music and be a band. No excuses. No freaking None. excuses. Just, 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 just that's it. Just, just, <laughs> so anyway, so yeah, uh, heavy metal in Baghdad, uh, really powerful. I watched it. It was on. It was uh, when it came out. It was. I believe it uh, premiered on Netflix. And that's where I saw it. Nice. Great, fantastic. All right, this is uh, Young Other, and we're gonna come back and talk about some more uh, disturbing uh, rock uh, rock docs. Stick around, guys. <laughs> That is Young Other. And you want to go to, it's very simple, youngother.com. We open the show with Bad Actress, Facebook.com, bad, uh, Facebook.com, backslash, I, I am not drinking either, uh, backslash Bad Actress Band. Um, so yeah, great, uh, we got some great music tonight. We have, we're going to play a band called uh, Samarkind. Samarkind. Samarkind, is that how you say it? Yeah, I know them. You know. So how do you say it again? Samarkind. Samarkind. Sam are kind. Instead of saying Sam is kind, Sam are kind. Well, that's how they told me to say it. So. Okay, Sam I'm going to take their word for it. Um, and I, if we got time, we're going to try to get in a Dead Man's Whiskey. Word. Great name, Dead Man's Whiskey. I like that. 
Too oh, bad you that, didn't think of it. That, yeah, it's, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I feel like I, I, they should dress like pirates. I don't know what they look like, but they should dress like pirates. Okay, so we are talking about disturbing rock ducks. Rock ducks. Rock duck, rock, 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 rock. We uh, open the show wow. with Lamb Lamb of God as the Palace Boines. Then we talked a little bit about the decline of Western civilization. Uh, Metallica, some kind of monster, and wrapped up the first segment with heavy metal in Baghdad. What do you got next on that list there, Lilith? Next on my list is Until the Light Takes Us, 2009. American documentary film about the early Norwegian black metal scene. So you know this is going to include interviews with bands like Mayhem and Immortal. Um, They have archive footage of... Both Euronymous and Dead from Mayhem, who were part of the controversial stories um, when Euronymous uh, encouraged Dead to commit suicide and when he was taking photos of the deceased dead, um, not even batting an eye, didn't care that he was dead or what what have you. Um, this is his bandmate and he's just like, oh, this is funny, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the photos were used for the live bootleg album, The Dawn of the Black. Um, Euronymous later was murdered by his bandmate, Varga Vikernes. In 1993, by a fatal stab wound. Um, and one of the most shocking scenes in the film is um, seeing Frost Harlstad, dr- uh, the drummer of Satyricon, going to um, one of his performance art shows where he's fire breathing and cutting himself with a knife in front of right, a stunned I, I, live audience, which I don't think I could handle <laughs> an actual cutting. <laughs> if it's a fake cutting, we got this. Like, I've seen bands gut other people in bands, and it's not a big deal because it's not real, but this is real. So, <laughs> yeah. Um... Do you guys know this song? <laughs> Holding on to black metal. Every time we talk about black metal, I think of the song by My Morning Jacket, Holding on to Black Metal. <laughs> um, I saw this documentary and was like, what? <laughs> it's disturbing. <laughs> it's like, I just can't, I can't relate to any of the people in it. I don't understand what they're doing. It doesn't make any sense to me. We have another, we have a couple other black metal kind of things on the list as well and this is where this is, i just don't get it <laughs> why why you can't answer that question just why well i and i know and i watched the documentary and i was like i still don't get it i don't know <laughs> what's wrong with you people um yeah, they seem to want to um um they seem to have some problem with uh, like western culture american culture kind of Take, taking over um, their country, uh, they were uh, they're very they were vaguely kind of blamed like the fact that they had a TGI Fridays in a Pizza Hut, <laughs> and it was like it's just like it was like I didn't know what in the hell they were doing. I thought when I watched it because I did not know I and I did not know anything about this music and had gone over my head. I thought I sort of thought this is fake. <laughs> like is this one of those like um what's a what a mockumentary yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> where you know we're just doing something so extreme and the person I was while the girlfriend and I that the girlfriend that I was watching it with we were we're kind of asking that question both ourselves we're like what <laughs> and then somebody later told us that no there's like um in Norway it was like church burnings and they were doing there was a lot yeah, of stuff like, going like, on no it's actually it was actually a real thing and people were really scared um if if um a mo- if a movie like the decline of western civilization or the uh, lamb of god uh movie that sort of shows that rock and rollers are just normal people and just go through normal stuff that they go through they have some problems you know like like the metallica movie shows uh you know they de- they're dealing with different life issues like the heavy metal in baghdad this is the o- opposite this is no rockers are evil <laughs> And, and they is, don't care if they and, kill their friends yeah, or their like, friends commit suicide. Like, 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 they're. I watch this and I go, like, okay, this is like Charles Manson didn't get locked up. He went to Norway and started black metal. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the kind of like impression you got from it. I, I don't. I don't have really much to say about it. it's. Um, it's 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 just like interesting for like. Um, like it's kind of like looking at like not that the movie itself is a train wreck, but the situation is kind of a train yeah. wreck. And you say you're watching it for like the shock value of like that's you know what I mean. The stuff that it's like happened. Certain reality and, TV yeah. you might watch or something like that. It's like 
I don't. I don't know. I. I <laughs> it's it's oh, just not. Yeah. Let's talk about something else. All right. Uh, this one isn't so uh, disturbing, but uh, the band itself is. It's Centuries of Torment. The first twenty years, two thousand and eight. It's uh, Cannibal Corpse specific. Um, it's a three hour doc, three hour plus yeah, documentary. Yeah, it's like on three DVDs or two yeah. DVDs or something. Three crazy. discs. Um, it's the history of the band plus tons of extras. Uh, they have some home video footage. It's like literally every step in their long and sort of. People say disgusting career, but because of the visuals of their band yeah, but and everything. They, they, these, these guys are they're not normal. like... They're normal guys. These guys are not like <laughs> until the light takes us. These guys are putting on a show. Right. Exactly. And I, now, I, saw, I watched some of this yeah. and they're just like, yeah, hey, John used to come over to my house all the time and other <laughs> kids were just having fun and blah, blah, blah. You know, it's not... And it's like... They're uh, quite normal yeah. guys. Uh, the disc one goes album to album. Disc two features some of the live performances. Where it comes in a little disturbing is the bonus chunks disc which is the third disc um they get into more detail about the topics of their graphic artwork uh there's a disturbing claymation featurette called um kill crane and um like i said they're they're they talk about metalocalypse but they're very normal guys the shock value from this comes from their art their lyrics um the songs themselves it's it's very disturbing type stuff coming from normal guys who are just they have an outlet to get the anger out and it's it's very it's actually very innocent and they were actually an ace ventura pet detective i don't know if you knew that i did i know that <laughs> yeah <laughs> i i look i always Hammer looked at them face. as a sort of like and and this is no offense to them okay i don't mean any i, I don't mean no disrespect but i always kind of looked at them as a, a kind of like um satire of violence yeah the sort of showing the the absurdity of it yeah that's the kind of kind of thing I, I I never thought that they never scared me or anything like that. I just thought it was it's not my thing. Their songs are disturbing and the lyrics are disturbing and it's very in your face screamy cookie monster type <laughs> songs if you're into that. Like Cannibal I love Cannibal Corpse, it's one of my favorite bands, but um that's where the shock value what comes is from. Your, it's a great... What are your top three favorite Cannibal Corpse songs? Oh god. It's Hammer Smash Face that one about that I talked about the other day, Shredded Humans, and then I can't even think of a third Hammer one. Right? Smash face. I love that song. That's a great title. <laughs> Hammer Hammer Smash Face. But I think they're great, and I, they're very normal. And the fact that they did a car, well, the one guy did a cartoon. Um, George Fisher's did a, the vocalist. He did the Metalocalypse. He was in that. So. Oh, he's in that. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> so the, I didn't realize it. That he, makes me feel like they're very normal. Yeah. People. They're just, yeah. They oh, just do the shock value. Are, like I said, their parents are in the documentary and of the uncles and stuff. Yeah. It's just like, right. <laughs> it's we're just guys. Not, it's, but it's a good, it's a good one. You should go watch that if you want something not black metal. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is the sort of antithesis of until the light takes us. Right. <laughs> it's the, it's, it's opposites is. Right. Um, give me another one. Uh, we're gonna do Pantera three. Watch it go, nineteen ninety seven. Um, these all seem tame now that I've talked about that other one. Um, this one is Pantera specific, like it says. It's a chronicle of the band that does show some music videos, but it also has some of their antics. Uh, the band is definitely has definitely raised hell on stage, but this also shows what they've done to other things like uh, the destroying of dressing rooms and cars. Uh, playing pranks on each other, and then the drinking and puking that they did, which was quite often. And um, there was the lovely case of uh, poo-pooing in the woods that they show on the video as well. But nothing wrong with that. You probably just don't want to watch it. <laughs> I don't want to watch it. <laughs> so. Again. <laughs> Very calm. <laughs> uh, compared to, yeah, I mean... Like, like these are all going to sound tame now. <laughs> they, they, sa- they sound tame until, when, uh, compared to Until the Light Takes Us. Well, the next one's a black metal one. So. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, let's go ahead. Let's hit that real quick. The uh, what is it? What's it called again? Uh, Murder Music: A History of Black right. Metal, two thousand and seven. Um, this one actually only aired on British pay per view. It centers around the again the controversial black metal subgenre. They touch on uh, Black Sabbath and Venom, but also the anti Christian um, controversies surrounding the criminal acts like the arson we talked about, the murder uh, of the early Norwegian scene. There's also um, the paradox of Christian form of black metal represented by a Scandinavian band, uh, Frost Harder. Um, they interview, again, Mayhem What and is Immortal. that again? Christian what? Christian um, black metal. What is that? <laughs> Are they, like, is it like it's a Christian? Ro- it's a Christian black like metal Christian band. Rock. Yes. <laughs> okay, Christian black metal. Okay. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, whatever. But um, they, they, uh, they. Interview- I know that there's probably we probably have fans <laughs> who love black metal, and they're probably hating us right now. Probably. They're probably thinking, you guys don't know what the hell you're talking 
<laughs> and I, I, I will admit I am woefully ignorant on black metal. No, like I know I said, some of it, but I don't know Christian black metal. Uh, but uh, again, an interviewing Mayhem, Immortal, Satyricon, and uh, Cradle of Filth. Um, non-musicians are also interviewed, like John Selzer, who was uh, Terrifier Magazine's editor. And uh, I'm going to say this guy's name wrong. It's Didrik Soderlund, who was the co-writer of the book Lords of Chaos, which discusses the murders and the church burnings and all of that sort of thing that happened then. Um, they do touch on the band Black Widow, whose stage performance was highly controversial. They used to base it on black magic that included ritual nudity and mock weaponry. And at that time, and you know, when they when they were doing this stuff, that was con- that was like a shocker, that sort of thing. Um, most of the bands they interviewed talked about Satanism and the occult. And once again, they talk about death, suicide, the church burnings, the murder. And um, they, a lot of them, a lot of the bands they interviewed said Dead's suicide was a PR stunt, which is kind of sick <laughs> and twisted. I don't know anybody who would kill themselves as a PR stunt, but that's cool. Um, and this one, I can't actually find the whole thing anywhere. I don't know if you saw it anywhere, but I was able to find various clips of points in the film, but I couldn't find the whole thing at once. Yeah, I no, I could. I found I found some clips. Well, I, they talked about Venom as a kind yeah. of one of the progenitors of that. Um, <clears throat> now, a really um, calm one that you had on your list um, is now this is this is practically like light entertainment is metal a headbanger. I journey. love this, though. And it's um, not really shocking. But. <laughs> it's not really shocking. But but they do what what I liked about this is there is a discussion about what metal means. And it it does. And it it relates to, to people that feel disaffected, that feel unrepresented in society. They feel like they can't, they don't quite fit in. But they're not sad. They feel like this is they feel like this is their community. And I think that that is the most powerful takeaway from like all of these uh, documentaries that we've talked about. Is that like <clears throat> it's not a pathetic thing. It is people who feel like this I, I you know this is just my this is my tribe this is who these are the kind of people i relate to and we're big on individualism and we don't you know we don't you go to like when we went okay. to see the slayer uh show uh you know you see i saw people dressed all kinds of different ways mm-hmm. and it was you a know, very big community yeah yeah, and, yeah i mean and every and what i what i sort of feel is i haven't i you know while while you know I moshing has really like been way toned down. It's kind of less. It's kind of like it's almost like a sort of like um, version of break dancing. Depending now. on the show you go. Yeah, to. Um, <laughs> but um, it's you know it is it, just a sort of like community of people that just the express who 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 hold kind of like individualism as a sort of like they're like main value. They've got to, just, I got to be me is kind of like the, the whole thing with them. <clears throat> and so they have this, so that's what the community is. And so that was a thing. I think it was a kind of main theme kind of in headbangers, uh, a metal a headbangers journey. It, Cause it does focus on that, uh, on the fans in that way. I feel that this was one of the most well done documentaries and most organized. The man who did it, um, Sam Dunn, he was 31 years old when he started this. He, it, it's so, well chronicled he is how he is over 40 musicians he interviews over 25 non-musicians it's very thorough and it's yeah. very professional he's got charts and graphs he's got a flow chart of all the subgenres of metal i had it printed out forgot to bring it over and he also has like just a timeline of everything and he was so organized and i think it's just very well done and the only shocking thing i really saw in it was when they talked about the um d snyder with the um pmrc trials that they do show and then a lot of the norwegian black metal bands were hired drunk during the interviews but that's the only thing that was shocking about it but i think it's really well done and you so, should just go see it so <laughs> so not quite that disturbing almost wouldn't have put it on the list um and the same with the pantera thing it's not it's, it's not crazy it's, it's shocking, typical but... rock guys acting kind of those good, are the good time ones. fellas you know what i mean um so we got one more to talk about yeah so let's let's talk about this thing because we're actually, and I apologize, I don't think we're going to get to both bands that okay. I talked about. So we'll have to save, um, we'll do, we'll save uh, Dead Man's Whiskey for next week. All right. So go ahead. So this last one, which I hate talking about this guy, but hated Gigi Allen and the Murder Junkies from 1993. Um, he is more punk. Uh, I feel I feel like he needs to be listed on here because of how disturbing and extreme that he was. Um, it's about his life and stage shows. Uh, he, they were very confrontational shows. Um, he did indecent exposure on stage defecation. He ate 
The substance that he defecated, I don't like what? to say it. Yeah, he ate it. Uh, physical assault, obscene language. Uh, there's footage shown of some of these things on the actual documentary. Um, and the filmmakers actually shot additional material on his death from a heroin overdose due to post during post production. Um, he talks about his early years of childhood and how his father tried to encourage his family to assist him in mass suicide. His original name, uh, name is Jesus Christ <laughs> by his father. Um, yeah. Um, when he did go see the initial screening of the documentary, he was very intoxicated. He threw beer bottles at people. He actually injured somebody. And um, he fled before the police arrived. Uh, he never saw the complete film because this, it happened days before he died. Um, he did give positive feedback after he was sober to the guy who made the film and gave him a hug. <laughs> oh. So that's... Yeah, I want a hug from a guy who defecates on stage. <laughs> he poops himself yeah, and eats it. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> it's called Hated. Hated. G.G. Allen and the Murder Kings. I heard... Um, uh, Eddie Trunk discussing. I've not seen this, and I, I'm not going to. I just don't want to see it. I. Am, um, but I heard oh Eddie Trunk discussing this, and they talked about how, um, you know, you know, now you, bands give uh, will sell uh, merchandise like you like. Um, Gene Simmons. We'll sell, sell anything. We'll sell, you know, the bits and uh, of the, you know, the show. So, so if you want the, you he'll sell you the bass he played. If there's blood on it from the, he does the thing with the with blood, the spinning blood. It's yeah. like another thousand dollars. Yeah, it's like yep. three thousand dollars for the bass. And if you want, you know, if you want, if you get one with blood on, it, it's like another thousand dollars, right? Okay, so so like stuff like that is like not. <laughs> Kiss is of course the king of doing that sort of thing, um, but. G.G. Allen and the Murder Kings were not above. They were businessmen, and they were not above <laughs> junkies trying to trying to trying to make a a buck. And as the story goes, the drummer would um, stick the his drumsticks up his poop hole, mm. and these were then sold to fans. Nope. And I don't need that. It, the the farther up the stick had been the more money it commanded that hurts <laughs> that hurts me even thinking about that oh god so, <laughs> so and there and there is and i did not watch it and after the podcast we should watch it oh. there there is a video on youtube of both um uh, dr phil and who's the black guy steve um, Harvey? No. Steve Harvey. Is it Steve Harvey? Reacting okay. to Gigi Allen. Okay. And like, I just, I, I, I meant to go back and watch it today and I forgot. So <laughs> like, we should watch their, rea watch their reactions because you know that. those two are going to be like, ah, freaking out. Oh, Dr. Phil probably. Yeah, he probably, he probably lost his mind. Probably drank chlorine after <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys, so, um, check out these documentaries. Hated Gigi Allen, the Murder Kings, Lamb of God, as... The Palace Burns, Metal, A Headbanger's Journey. I have that bookmark. I really want to watch that. Uh, Centuries of Torment, The First 20, 20 Years of Cannibal Corpse. Great title. Until the Light Takes Us. Heavy Metal in Baghdad. Fantastic. If you haven't seen it, you should watch it. Uh, Some Kind of Monster uh, about Metallica's uh, forays into uh, uh, therapy, a group therapy. The Decline of Western Civilization. Which, if I, you haven't seen it, you should have. Highly recommend both uh, the first one and the second, as well as uh, with the Pan Pantera 3. What's it called again? Pantera what? Pantera 3 something, something, something. Hold something, on. something, something. Watch it go. Watch it go. So check them all out. And uh, if you guys want to pop over to LulombardiRocks.com, you start, you know, ch tell us which ones you liked and we'll we'll do some conversations about it. I've been banned from Facebook now for for a month. I'm about ready to be unbanned here in the next few days. So um, I will be able to do those. But I th I'm really liking YouTube and I'm feeling at home here. So I think that the podcasts are just going to, we're just going to kind of, do the Facebook thing as an, a kind of additional thing and mainly stick with YouTube. Um, so you guys just have to come over and hang out with the YouTube. That, 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 you'll just have to do that. Uh, you've been listening to Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. Uh, LulombardiRocks.com is the best way to get more information about that. Shout out one more time to Wolf's Customs uh, at uh, Wolf's Customs.online. Get that custom guitar. And of course, 
as always, Rock Rage Radio, which is just the absolute best. Those guys are so great. We do appreciate their support. They've brought uh, the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus and Company to a much bigger audience. So we do appreciate that, guys. Um, we are kicking around. I, I've got it. Lily and I are going to discuss possibility for next week's show. I need to confirm with who our guest might be before I totally decide on it. But I do have an idea, and we'll talk about it. Okay. Um, and that's pretty much it, guys. We're going to get out of here. Oh, and how do you say these guys' names? Sam Arkind. Sam, Ar- Sam Arkind. Mm-hmm. So we're going to we're going to wrap up with Sam Arkind. I'm so my apologies to Dead Man's Whiskey. We'll do some Dead Man's Whiskey. We'll, we'll play them first next week. Okay. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for hanging out with us. We'll catch you guys all on the next Ludini. Ro- oh, Lily, I'm sorry. Your show. Oh, I beg your pardon, they know my show. It's okay. It's Hot Licks with Lily Six Thursday, six p.m. Eastern on Rock Rage Radio. Download the app for free or go to rockrageradio.com. All right, we'll catch you guys all in the next video. Love you all, sir.